Hey guys, welcome to a new tutorial. Today I will show you how we can implement our own chatbot from scratch in PyTorch. You will learn some basics about natural language processing and also how we apply deep learning with PyTorch for this real world application. So let me show you the chatbot first. It's currently running in my terminal here and I can talk to him. So for example, I already said hi and then I gave him the name Sam and he answered with hey. And then I can, for example, I set this up to be a bot for an e-commerce website that sells coffee. So for example, I can ask, what do you sell? And then I get, we sell coffee and tea. And I can also, for example, ask how long does shipping take? And then I get delivery takes two to four days. And so yeah, that's our simple chatbot. I can also say bye and then I get have a nice day. Now let's take a look behind the scenes here. So our bot is trained on this JSON file. This is our training data. And I think the structure is very easy to understand. So we have different intents. And then for each intent, we have a tag. So in this case, greeting. This is basically our class label. Then we have different patterns for this tag. So hi, hey, how are you? And then we also have different responses for this tag. So for example, hey, with a smiley face and hello, thanks for visiting. And then here, for example, in this case, we have the tag greeting. Then we also have goodbye. We have thanks, items and some more. And whenever a new sentence or question comes in, then our bot tries to classify it in one of those tags. For example, if it recognizes that it is a greeting, then it takes randomly one of those answers from this responses. So um, that's how it works. And now if we have a look at the uh, chat again, then we might see that we don't have to use exactly those patterns. For example, here um, we have those patterns in the greeting. And now we can also type in, for example, hi there. And it still knows this is a greeting. And now let's have a look at some more examples. For example, um, let's have a look at the payment. So let's ask him, um, can I pay cash? So this is not exactly there. We only have, can I pay with PayPal or are you cash only? Now, if I type in, can I pay in cash or cash? Then I get a correct answer from this category. We accept Visa, MasterCard and PayPal. So yeah, that's how we should train our chatbot. And this um, JSON file is very easy to customize for your own application. For example, here at the end, I put in a different category now. So category funny. And here I can say, tell me a joke or do you know a joke? And then it tells me a joke. So let's try this out. So let's ask him a sentence. So let's say, can you be funny, which is not exactly in there. And now if we hit enter, then we get a joke here. So this is working. And this is how you should um, train your own chatbot. So define your own tags, then some different patterns and then um, set up different possible responses and then run the whole training again, which, uh, which we will implement now, the training pipeline. So yeah, that's how it works. Okay, so I will split this tutorial into four parts. So in this first part, we learn some theories so some NLP concepts like stemming, tokenization and bag of words. Then in the second part, we create our training data. In the third part, we set up our PyTorch model and implement a training pipeline. And in the last part, we save and load our model and then implement the actual chat. I want to mention here that I also have a full PyTorch beginner course here on YouTube. So if you will not understand all of the PyTorch code, then you can have a look at this course. It covers all the concepts that we're going to use and also much more. 
I will put the link in the description. And as a heads up, this is not going to be a very sophisticated model. It's just a feed forward neural net with two hidden layers. There are much more advanced models available nowadays. However, this example should give a nice introduction for beginners about chatbots that is easy to follow. And it's still good enough for basic chatting as you could see in the beginning. I also want to mention that the approach I'm going to use is loosely based on this article here contextual chatbots with TensorFlow. So my approach is similar, except that I'm using PyTorch instead. But this is a very nice article that I can recommend and I will put the link in the description as well. All right, so now let's start with some theory and have a look how we can set up our training data. All right, so here I prepared some slides and now I want to show you how we create our training data. So what we have to do is we have our different patterns like how and how are you and then we also know the the tag for this so in this case it's greeting and then as a different tag we have goodbye and then we see we have patterns by and see you later. So we can compare this with our intense.json so here we have the tag the greeting and then different patterns. So hi and how are you like I just showed you and then also some more. And with this training data, we somehow have to train our deep learning model. But we cannot simply put the string like this into our model. So we somehow have to convert our string to a vector that contains numbers. And for this, we're going to use a concept that is called back of words. So I will explain this in a second. But in order to use the back of words, we must collect all the different words from the patterns. So all the different patterns that our bot um, sees, um, we will put these as single words into an array. So we split our string. So here we have the words hi, how, are, you, by, see and later. These are all single words in this array. And now we use this to apply the so called bag of words. So now for each different pattern, we will create an array with the same size as the all words array. And then if this word is included, uh, the word from the pattern is included in the all words array, then we put a one at this position and zero otherwise. So the high is available here at this position. So here we put in a one. And for the rest, we just put a zero. And for this pattern, the next pattern, how are you? Here, the at this position with high, we put a zero. Then at the next position with how we put a one because the how is in the pattern and also in the all words. Then the same with R and the same with you and the rest is zero. So this is how the back of words um, is working. And then we do this for all the different patterns. Then this will be our X data for the training uh, for the model. And then for each pattern, we also know the label. So the greeting gets the label zero and goodbye gets the label one. So then we also have numbers here and this will be our y vector for the model then. And this is how we can put it into our model to train our deep learning pipeline. And as a heads up, this is a feed forward neural net, which I will show you in the third part. So as an input, we put in our bag of words, then our feed forward neural net is trained somehow. And at the end, we get different probabilities for the different classes. And then for example, in this case, it knows that it get is a greeting. So yeah, this is 
roughly how it works. And in order to get from the sentence, how are you, to the back of words, we have to apply or we want to apply in this example two more NLP techniques. And the first one is called tokenization. So this means splitting a string into meaningful units. For example, it, the units can be words, punctuation characters or numbers. So here I have an example. So I have the sentence, what would you do with a million dollars? And then a question mark. And then if we apply tokenization, then it will return an array where we have all the different words as one string and it also split it the number here so we have one million then we have the dollar sign and also the question mark so here i have another example so this says aren't you happy with so much money and then what's interesting here is how it splits this aren't so it will split it into r and then nt and this can be different based on the tokenization technique that you use so for example it might also put this just into one word without the apostrophe basically yeah that's how the concept of tokenization works and this is the first concept that we are going to apply and the next concept that we want to apply is called stemming. So stemming is an NLP technique that generates the root form of the words. So it's just a crude heuristic that chops off the ends of, of words. So for example, if we have these three different words, organize, organizes and organizing, and then if we apply stemming, then we chop off the ending so all of these words will become organ and this is because we don't need to learn all the different variants in this case yeah so that's how stemming works and there are also different stemmers available so there might be different results based on different stemmers that you apply and for example Here's another example. So if we have universe and university, and then the result will be in two, in both cases, cases will be universe and here cut or chopped off at this position. And in this case, we might lose the actual meaning of the word. So we have to be careful with this technique, but that's what we are going to use. And this is the whole NLP pre-processing pipeline that, that we will use in our algorithm. So we first get the whole sentence, then we apply tokenization. So we split our sentence into the different words and here also the punctuation character. Then we lower all the words. So is with a capital I becomes is with a lower I. Then we stem the words. So here the ending got chopped off. Then we also exclude punctuation characters. So we don't need the question marks or the exclamation marks. And then based on this array, we calculate the so-called back of words that I just showed you. And then we get our X vector. And this is how we create our training data. All right, so let's jump to the code and implement these pre-processing techniques. So we will implement the tokenization, then the lowering and stemming, and also the back of words. So for this, we are going to use a framework that is called NLTK, so Natural Language Toolkit. This is a Python library to work with human language data that is pretty nice. So we will get all of these concepts from this toolkit. So tokenization and stemming. So let's create a new file here and let's call this nltkutils.py. 
And then let's activate our virtual environment. So I'm using Conda for this. So I say Conda activate PyTorch. I already have a virtual environment where I have PyTorch installed. And then we have to say pip install, or we can also use conda install um, nltk. And in my case, it's already installed, so I can use it. So I can say import nltk. And then as I said, we want to implement these um, methods. So let's create a method define tokenize which will get a sentence um, then we will define a method for stemming which will get a word and then we will also create a method define um, back of words and for this as i said we want to have an array with all words and we also put in let's call this tokenized sentence so that we know we have to apply tokenization first and we will implement this one in the next tutorial so for now let's just focus on tokenization and stemming so here we can implement this in one line so we say return nltk dot word tokenize and then our sentence and if you're running this the first time you might get an error so we also have to download a package from nltk so we can say nltk dot download and then as a string punct so this is a package with a pre-trained token tokenizer so that this can work and I already downloaded this on to my machine so I can comment this out. And now we have tokenization and stemming. We can also um, implement this in one line, but for this we have to import a stemmer. So we say from nltk.stem.porter import por stemmer so there are different ones available in this case I'm using the porter stemmer so you can try out different ones for yourself and then um, we have to create a stemmer of course so we say stemmer equals porter stemmer and then in our function what we want to do is we say return stemmer dot them our word and we also con want to convert our word to lower cases so we say word dot lower and now we have our pre-processing techniques or utility functions so let's try them out let's create a string here and let's grab um, this pattern from our JSON file and then let's say our or let's print our string and let's say our a should now be tokenized so we call tokenize a and then print a again and now if we run this so we say python nltk utils.py then we should get both the string the input string and the tokenized string so we see we have all the different words split up and the question mark so our tokenization is working and now let's um, test the stemming so for this i have the example words from the slides so organize organizes and organizing and now let's say we have our stemmed words equals and here we use list comprehension and then we say stem and then w so a word for w in words and then we want to print the stemmed words 
And for example, we could also use a capital O here and test this. And then if we run this, then we see we get the stamped version of these words. So all in lower cases and all have organ, organ, organ with the end chopped off. So our stemming works. And so yeah, I think that's it for part one. And then in the next part, we will continue by creating the actual training data. So we will load this file and then apply all of these techniques and also implement the bag of words. So see you there.